Hi, this is Mitsaka and today I want to show you a small sneak peek at the asset pipeline that I use when creating 2D graphics using Blender. What I generally do is I go into Blender and I create these mockups using just meshes and 3D objects. You can see I'm just having meshes here with some bevel mirror subdivision modifiers on them and I generally use these to create um, the graphics that I want um, because I'm just a lot faster in Blender, you know. <laughs> the problem though is if you try to export all these small assets into your game engine, it's very tedious because what you would have to do is you would have to create a camera, position it on top of this, um, guess the right value of how large the object is, which resolution do you want, etc. And that is just a process that um, takes way too much time. So what I created is this little script uh, which does the following thing. Let's say we want to export this small stopwatch. You can see it's made out of multiple objects but they are all parented to this one thing except the text because you obviously uh, want to do the text in your game engine. Um, what you can do then is you can just press uh, this button, run the script and what it does is it sets the camera on top of this, sets the correct resolution, um, sets everything else as um, don't render this. So if we look into tools, for example, it's all set to don't render. And then it also automatically saves it into a folder which is called images. And then because it is in the collection timer, um, you can see here our images. And that is really, really useful. Um, and I could do this with, uh, let's say, this paper thing here, render it perfect. Let's actually look a little bit into this script here. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using my pixels per unit value. So I'm defining that one unit in Blender should be, in this case, 424 pixels. Um, and that idea is super nice because then what I actually do is I get this object, I get all the child objects, I apply their um, rotation, etc., which I discard later on, so I, I, I undo that step. But the advantage of that is that I get the bounding box of the um, entire thing, and then I can just see, okay, how large is this, where do I need to position my camera, etc. Which is super useful. Um, so that is that. We have a select children value if we set that to false for example and render let's say this ring here you should see that it only renders that object and not the children which is kind of cool. Um, we have auto save render which puts it into that folder. Um, be aware that this can overwrite existing images so um, if you don't want to lose anything, you should use some version control software. We have this render full value, which I found pretty useful. The idea behind the render full value is that it renders your entire screen, which you can define here. You can define a resolution, a resolution multiplier, which is at a smaller resolution, which is why this is a bit blurry, um, and a scale for how large the canvas actually is that you want to use. So if it is uh, 4.6, you can see that the height of this is 4.6. Um, yeah, you need to set the cam name. If you don't use the default camera, um, you need to set this here. Be aware that this name here should not only appear in the object, but also if you expand this object, you see that there's a smaller um, actual camera object beneath it. And these need to have the same name, which is this name. Otherwise, the script can't find your camera and it will have a problem. Um, when you have a folder name, etc. It's it's super straightforward. I try to comment it, uh, to comment the code as much as possible. Um, I'm not the best Python coder, so there's probably some problems in here, and this is obviously not a fully fleshed add-on. But I hope that you can find some use for this. Um, some some small remarks regarding render settings. If you have never like created 2D graphics in Blender, um, 
it is important to set your camera to autographic, like put it on top of this. Um, and then what else do we have? Oh yeah, we um, should set in color management. What I always do is I set it to standard instead of filmic. Because then what I can do I, I, is I can just create emission materials and set this color. If I have it still on filmic, it will change this color slightly, which I obviously don't want. So um, that helps a lot. And then I guess just also set the background to transparent under film. So I go to rendering film and then transparent background, which helps a lot. Um, yes. I hope um, this might be useful for your 2D games or for making just like small icons and just smaller things. I've just found this workflow really, really useful because I just can just dump everything into one um, Blender file. I can preview it. I can just work in Blender on everything and then export it um, one by one to my game engine. Um, I will provide a file for this. So I will provide the script, of course, but I will also provide the Blender file. Uh, in which you can try these things out. I hope you can use this. Um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.